Welcome to the University of Cincinnati Internal Medicine Residency Patient Centered Rounds tutorial entitled Providing the Right Amount of Data at the Bedside. After this presentation, medical teams should be able to provide the right amount of data at the bedside. Bedside patient centered rounds have many advantages. Unfortunately, early learners sometimes try to present too much data at the bedside, essentially recapitulating table rounds in front of the patient. Bedside rounds should be for the benefit of the patient and not simply a method for giving information to the attending. In the following vignette, see if you can spot the opportunities for improvement. Hi, Ms. Green. Hey, we have a team here. I'm going to tell them what happened overnight, okay? Okay. So Ms. Green is our 30-year-old female with diabetes, high blood pressure, um, who came in with uh, left arm pain, and it turns out that it was infected and she has cellulitis. So you told me this morning that um, you're still having a lot of pain. It didn't hurt as much as when it came in, maybe like a 7 out of 10 on the pain scale. Um, it's a little bit itchy today. You think the antibiotics are sort of working, but you know, not as much as you thought they were going to. Eating and drinking okay. You've um, gotten up and walked around, um, had a bowel movement, um, and Dr. Peng, maybe we can move on to the okay. partners, what's yes. happened overnight. So um, your vital signs, your temperature was 97.6, heart rate 94, blood pressure 126 over 84, respirations 20, um, your oxygen saturation was 98% uh, on the air, which means your blood cells were getting enough oxygen. That's normal. Um, on your exam today, your pupils were equal, round, and reactive. Um, your mucous membranes were moist. I didn't see any JVD. Um, your heart sounded normal. I heard a normal Did anything change on physical exam since yesterday? Um, her, her left arm looks the same as it did yesterday. Her belly didn't have any tenderness. Um, she didn't have any edema or swelling in her legs, and I felt good pulses. On her labs, her white blood cell count was 4.5, um, neutrophils were 80%, hemoglobin 12, um, hematocrit 33, platelets were 150. On her renal panel, it was 143, 3.4, 111, 18, uh, 24, and 1.0. We, we can look through the labs. But okay. Uh, anything, acute, uh, anything abnormal? Um, no. Okay. Okay. And then um, her ESR and, and her was um, 10 and her CRP was 0.4. Okay. Um, so our plan for the day for um, your cellulitis, we're going to continue your um, vancomycin, which is the antibiotic, um, and we're going to have wound care come see you and help do the dressing changes and keep marking it for us so we know how it's doing. Um, and for your diabetes, we're going to continue you on a diabetic diet with finger sticks, ACHS, and a sliding scale. And for your high blood pressure, it's actually looking pretty good in a normal range, but we're still going to continue your um, atoprolol and your amlodipine. And then um, for DVT prophylaxis, we're going to continue your heparin. Okay. Although this was a dramatization, rounds like this can occur. Patient-centered teams should provide just the right amount of data at the bedside. Patient-centered teams should consider that bedside rounds should be for the patient and not simply a method for delivering information to the attending. Attendings can improve rounds by reviewing data before rounds, especially in the area of the electronic medical record when data is ubiquitous and easy to get. Teams should tailor information that meets the patient's needs and be ready to increase or decrease information as needed. In the next vignette, Observe how the intern tailors and streamlines information to meet the needs of the patient and team. Hi, Ms. Green. Do you remember us? Hey, of course. How are the red team. Yes. Yes, Dr. Brown, Correct. Dr. Blue, Stripes, and Pink. You got it. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Pink's going to tell us what happened overnight. Okay. So, Ms. Green, you told me um, this morning that you were feeling a lot better. No more fevers like when you first came in. And the area of redness and pain or your cellulitis on your arm, you think is getting a lot better with antibiotics. Uh, definitely. Good. Um, in terms of your exam and your vital signs, uh, you didn't have a fever. Everything looked okay. Um, and I agree with you that on exam, your area of cellulitis is better. Exactly. 
and it wasn't as um, tender when I was touching it today. On the labs, the blood work we did this morning, your white blood cell count was normal compared to yesterday when it looked like you had more of an infection. Okay. And um, your kidney numbers look great too. Um, so our plan for the day is uh, for the cellulitis to continue your antibiotics through your IV. Um, and maybe tomorrow we can talk about switching to an oral medication. Mm -hmm. And for your diabetes to continue the insulin that you take at home. Sounds like a plan. Do you have any questions? Um, if what happens if I can't be switched to oral? Or what's that? What happens if I can't be what switched? What happens? Mm -hmm. Well, we might have to, I, I think your response is really good to the antibiotics, so I think it's likely we'll be able to do that. If tomorrow it looks like you're not improving, we can do another day of the IV and watch it. Okay, that sounds good. So maybe you get to go home tomorrow? Yeah, maybe. In the vignette, the attending physician had already reviewed the data in the electronic medical record, and the intern used common words for patient understanding and streamlined the most important information. The next step in this process would be to perform a teach-back, which can be viewed in another tutorial in this series. Thank you for watching the University of Cincinnati Internal Medicine Residency Patient Center Rounds tutorial. If you'd like to see other tutorials in this series, please use the search term UCINTMED in YouTube.